whether you've been collecting Star Wars figures or, well, any pretty much action figure line or even doll line, the idea of a deluxe offering is nothing new to you. It's done by retailers in order to create a larger planogram. And for collectors, it's a chance to get larger characters, sometimes even fans' choice characters. Hey, why not? Now, most of the time, deluxe figures, at least historically, have been a character with a large accessory. Whether that is a tube to take a bath in, or a jet ski, or a small truck. Hey, whatever kids play with. Nowadays, due to the expense of figures, deco tends to be a reason figures are deluxe, and yeah, this hasn't really gone over that well. But back in the day, you know, back when we were all youngins, deluxe figures were a staple, and they were affordable. They were usually about double the price of a basic figure, but you got about three times as much value. That tends to be the calculation. And again, whether you're getting a larger item or a figure with lots of accessories, that's what makes up Deluxe. And Deluxe was brought back for the Star Wars Gold Card Saga line. That was the, the blue cards with the gold stripe up the side, hence why they're called the Gold Cards, even though they're mostly blue. I guess to differentiate from the all blue cards without the gold stripe. Now, this line in particular stands out to me because it was the time when we got a lot of Rebel Leaders. Which are tough because, you know, outside of Admiral Akbar, most casual fans can't really name too many rebel leaders. I mean, you know, there's Santa Claus guy and there's, you know, the other guys with the beards and there's the lady with the white cloak and, you know, there's a bunch of old white dudes. What can I say? They don't exactly make exciting action figures. I mean, you might know General Maydeen from his uh, vintage figure, but General Carlos Riken doesn't exactly show up on a lot of people's lists. But he was on mine, because he's the leader of Echo Base, and I really wanted the three major rebel generals. And during the Saga Gold period is when we started to get them. So Riken, who has a ridiculously canny similarity to John Kerry, who was running for president at the time when this figure came out, which was kind of funny, well, can't fault that because that's just what the actor looks like. And translating this into an action figure for the very first and only time was pretty exciting. Now, it was a bit of a boring figure, you know, old white man who comes with a wall map. Ooh, you could just see the kids running out for this one. But, you know, for collectors, it was fantastic because it's fun to get sort of pieces of a set, props you can use to build out your Echo Base set. And you do see these screens throughout the trilogy, you know, on Yavin, etc., etc. The character of Riken, or rather his figure, was re-released, albeit without the wall map as a basic figure later on in the Saga collection. But yeah, if you really wanted this figure, despite the fact that he has very limited articulation and is way behind the times in terms of that, but the only way to get the little pointy wall map was with the deluxe figure, and I actually bought two just so I could get two of those. The next deluxe figure brought us our first and only 3 and 3 fourth escape pod. Now, you might think this would be a stormtrooper that would come with this, but no, nope, C-3PO also makes sense since, you know, him and R2 went inside of it. And it's interesting that for one of the very first vehicles we ever see in Star Wars, it's highly popular. It shows up in toys constantly. Probably because it's one of the only action scenes that R2 and 3PO are actually involved in, if you'll call crashing into the desert an action scene. But it makes a great toy, and it's surprising how few escape pods we've gotten in almost any scale. Not to mention a really great non-vac metalized C-3PO. The back of the card does a nice job showing off R2-D2, sold separately, in a very tiny call-out. You may even think he's in there. It's a good thing it wasn't a closed box package, Hasbro. And in addition to the droid, you get a really cool open canopy escape pod. Now, obviously, escape pods are a science fiction staple and was a big part of Star Wars being a key part of the opening scene. And you can clearly see what it looks like, right? Sort of round tube with four, count them, one, two, three, four engines. Which is why it's really surprising when the only other escape pod toy we got was the Micro Machine version, which only had three pipes coming out the back. Three engines. I mean, come on. You've got the ultimate reference. There's like three shots of the escape pod flying through outer space. Well, it was nice that we got a corrected one with the right number of engines and threw in a C-3PO to boot. Which, again, was really cool because it's one of the only vac non-vac metalized versions. Not much articulation, but the limbs do come apart, so you could double him for Cloud City if you wanted. It's fun to have a C-3PO that's painted and not vac metalized because it just creates a different look. Next up in our deluxe lineup is an Ewok. And most Ewoks tend to get the deluxe treatment with said hang glider because flying Ewoks are fun. Hey, we've had, uh, you know, Ewok combat gliders since day one and they show up much like the escape pod in 
almost every toy line. Now, this one in particular is the exact Ewok we saw in the movie that was flying on the hang glider, as opposed to the previous Power of the Force 2 version, which was an Ewok on the hang glider that was cut from the movie. We see some uh, images from behind the scenes. So, our Ewok with attack glider in the Saga line now, for the first time, gives us the actual Ewok that uses the hang glider. We would eventually get a lot more Ewoks, but they were slow to come out. I mean, Hasbro was really slow in offering Ewoks for the modern line. In Power of the Force 2, we only got one two-pack with Wicked and Low Grey. And uh, after that, it was years until we got Tebow. I mean, I guess we did get that uh, other, you know, off-scene version of the Ewok glider. So our new Ewok glider, Ewok, is actually based on Tebow. It uses the same body with a new head and gives them some new accessories. But hey, you know, it's great to have more Ewoks. And it took a long time to get these. All right, let's take a look at these figures here. So we'll start off with our Ewok doesn't get named on the package, but I'm sure uh, we can look him up on Wikipedia. So you can see he has a unique head and uh, non-removable cowl, which is interesting because most Ewoks, their cowls are not sculpted on. This one is, so that's kind of cool and unique. And comes with a glider, which would eventually get re-released as well later on, and comes with two little uh, bombs to drop and a stick for pointing. I actually lost one of those in the movie, but then I found it. I'm so excited. All right, so 3PO, you can see he, all of the limbs pull off just like a Cloud City version um, because, you know, why not? Kids like pulling off limbs. And as I said, this is a really cool version because he's actually painted. And then the escape pod there, so you can put it inside. R2 will fit in as well and close it up, and then you could you know, chuck him across the room. See? Four! Count them four engines. All right. So that's how you get him in and out, and we are just comparing him to some previous back metalized versions. So that's the uh, the Vintage Saga one, this is the Power of the Force 2 Comtech one, and what did I do with it? Uh, here is the uh, Vintage one from Kenner. Actually, this is the retro one, the recreation of it. But you can see the back metal compared to a painted job, which is a very neat, unique look for 3PO, and I appreciate that. Finding a way to make 3PO just a little bit different. The wash is really great, too. All right, and then finally, General Riken. The guy looks just like presidential candidate John Kerry, or was he, like some secretary of the environment now? And there's his little wall map. He has very little articulation. He only has five points, which puts him way behind the scenes of, or behind the times of figures at, you know, this era. Point, point. All right, so he can point to the map. 